good morning to one and all. Uh, today's lecture topic is uh, resin bonded fig. So at the end of the lecture, you should be able to define resin retained bridges, classify types of resin res retained bridges, discuss the criteria for selection and its application. So coming to the introduction and the definition, a fixed dental prosthesis that is looted to tooth structure, primarily enamel, which has been etched to provide mechanical retention for the resin cement, is known as re resin bonded bridges. So this is according to the GPD-8. These are also known as adhesive bridges. First, it was, it was described by Rochick in 1973, which involved the mandibular anterior teeth. Okay, so it basically involves replacing teeth by attaching pointics to thin metal retainers. The retention to metal form the basis of the development of this prosthesis. So, based on the retention to metal, this concept was formed. Uh, Bruno Core acid edge technique and Bovin's resins assisted the development of this concept further. Okay, so coming to the indications, a replacement of missing interiors in children, adolescents, uh, even adults. Uh, abutments with Sufficient enamel to edge for retention, short span bridges, medically compromised patients, also uh, splinting periodontally weak teeth as a long term temporary restoration in patients with craniofacial anomaly. Uh, coming to the contraindications, so thin anterior teeth, uh, facial lingually, especially like the mandibular incisors short clinical crowns, when facial aesthetics of teeth require a change, deep vertical overbite, insufficient enamel available for bonding, caries, restorations, hypoplasias, parafunctional habits, long-term, long-span bridges, and sensitivity to base metal alloys. So these are the um, places we cannot do it. These are Advantages of doing it are using this bridges. Conservation of tooth structure preparation is confined to the enamel. Uh, tolerant to tissues with no pulpal trauma and supra gingival margins. Anesthesia is not required as it's not so deeply prepared. Impression making is easier. Uh, provisional restorations are not required. Less chair time. Uh, less uh, chair side time, does not require cast alterations. Reduce cost and rebonding is possible if by chance it gets rebonded. Disadvantages, the longevity is a question. So studies have um, proved that it lasts for five to eight years the max and then uh, you can see some bonding issues. Uh, so, yes, that is a question, the longevity. Yes, it is te technique sensitive. Space contour alignment correction of abutment is not possible because uh, you understand you are not really doing the whole tooth preparation. You are just etching the enamel and putting the uh, bridge. Possibility of over, over contouring is high, which can lead to increased plaque accumulation. So. This is the edge surface um, on the lingual side of example of the lower anterior teeth. So we'll be discussing that in the photos. You'll see, you'll understand. It can be used to replace only one teeth, especially the anteriors. Yes, but again, you have to make make sure it's indicated in these cases. It's not indicated in all the cases. Okay, so it can uh, cause graying in thin teeth. Aesthetics is moderate. Classifications. So resin bonded fixed partial dentures can prosthesis can be classified based on type of retention utilized by the retainers, which uh, incidentally forms the basis of their development. Okay. 
There is mechanical, micromechanical, macromechanical, and okay. Coming to the mechanical, the Rochet bridge. It was de developed by Rochet in 1973. So this was this was the first one to be developed. It looks like a wing line retainer with multiple flared perforations you can appreciate in this photo to provide mechanical retention for resin cement both anterior and posterior fixed partial denture so that's how it basically looks like uh, a clinical study by Bowie uh, et al showed that anterior FVDs with periphery retainers had 50 percent failure in 110 months and 63% uh, in 130 months so you can see that uh, doesn't have such a long uh, lifespan to it. Okay, coming to the limitations. So again, you can appreciate in the photo the same uh, rotted bridge. Perforations weakens the metal retainers. Uh, that is an obvious thing, guys, uh, because um, if you have perforation, you're weakening, you're reducing the surface area of the prosthesis, and uh, definitely it's going to be weaker. The resin in the perforation was gets exposed to the oral fluids which causes wear and micro leakage here 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 and here so you see right retention provided by the perforation was is limited basically so yes there are problems which are this bridge so coming to a better form of the same is by the micro mechanical is the maryland bridge developed by Levy, Dittis, and Thompson. Uh, so what happens here basically is you do an etching that is electrolytic etching. Uh, it provides a micro-mechanical retention to non-perforated base metal retainer. So this is non-perforated, that's the basic difference. So it is bonded by resin cement for etching that uses 3.5 solution of nitric acid with a current of 250 uh, microamperes for five minutes followed by immersion in 18 percent hydrochloric acid and using an ultrasonic cleaner for 10 minutes so this is just a procedure of electrolytic etching okay uh okay so the chemical etching is done by 10 percent sulfuric acid and uh, also gel etching has yielded some uh probable results some similar results so these can be used and this is basically the picture of the same this is without perforations okay so these uh, grooves you can see we will talk about it in detail in the operations okay you can see the grooves and preparation this is hardly in the enamel right and you put a bridge here with the support of the adjacent teeth so Advantage is it has better retention than the perforated retainer, that is from the Rochet retainer. Highly polished retainer prevents plaque accumulation. Limitations are highly technique sensitive. Yes, obviously. And uh, variable results are reported for, for from etching of the same alloy. Retention decreases with. Okay. To improve that came the macro mechanical bridge, that is the Virginia bridge. This is an example of a Virginia bridge which is developed by Moon and uh, uh, Hudson. Uh, so it, uses, it utilizes the macroscopic mechanical retention used in the lost salt crystal technique. Okay, so this is a technique which it uses. Okay, so this is the technique, the procedure. So a dye is lubricated, sieved cubic uh, salt. Um, is sprinkled on the surface leaving out the margins and then a resin pattern is built over the salt allowing it to get incorporated in the resin the salt is then dissolved by placing a set pattern in the in an ultrasonic cleaner so the advantages is that um, the procedure can be used with any metal and bonding to metal is superior to electrolytic bonding so you understand as we are proceeding further in our uh, bondings uh, we are uh, finding a better bridge which is bonding better to the teeth so disadvantage is the thickness of retainers increased to allow retentive layer so now you get the okay 
So coming to the mesh, cast mesh uh, RPD. So these are nylon mesh, which is placed on the pallet. So we are only talking about the mesh, guys. You understand, right? Yeah, the, this is not a type of bridge. I'm just talking about the mesh, special mention of the bridge. So a nylon mesh is placed on the palatal or lingual surface of a abutment die and the pattern is fabricated over the mesh, okay? So the mesh gets incorporated and following casting provides retention for resin to metal, okay? So the mesh helps in increasing the retention. Disadvantage of this technique is, I mean, of using a mesh is adaptation of the nylon mesh to the cast is not really good. The wax may flow in between the mesh, locking all the undercuts. Okay, so the retention of the metal to the resin in all the above types of resin bonded bridges can be improved by silenization and uh, air abrasion with aluminium oxide. So Basically, in dentistry, silenization is referred to like using a silent coupling agent. So it, it's basically a addition promoter to chemically unify dissimilar materials. Okay, so uh, silence are very effective in addition promotion between resin composites and silica based to restorative materials, you understand? So that silenization can. Coming to the last type of bridge, that is the chemical type that is also known as the adhesive bridges. These are now the most commonly used uh, yeah, methods for bonding the resin uh, cements to metal. So their high bond strength, fracture toughness and long-term clinical success has rendered alloy etching and microscopic retention mechanism uh, obsolete. So the following materials can be employed. So what can be used is modified bis GMA cement, superbond and rototech cement. Sorry. Okay. Now coming to the third part of our learning outcome that is the tooth preparation principles in resin bonded RPDs. Okay. Uh, so what I will do now is um, uh, I'll just show you the photo and then I'll go through those points together rather than reading those points. So resin bonded abutment preparation for incisors. So as you can see on the lingual surface, so basically the lingual axial reduction follows the anatomical planes. Okay, so this is the principle of tooth preparation as well, guys. We are following all the anatomical planes. Uh, proximal, which is a proximal preparation, must extend labially just beyond contact. Uh, so we have to extend it a little labially just to provide a bit more retention, okay? Sure. So basically, these bridges encompass only 180 degree of the teeth, not 360, okay? So a normal tooth preparation basically encompasses 360 degrees, okay? Right. So supragingival chamfer finish line, as you can see, uh, is usually used. Occlusal clearance of 0 0.5, where, uh, which is actually required. So what this will help is, um, uh, so at the end, how you'll get this is, uh, you have to uh, follow the principles of tooth preparation, but uh, keep in mind that this is a preparation of uh, resin bonded restorations. Okay, so uh, proximal grooves and boxes. Can you see these small boxes grooves? So basically these are grooves, not really boxes. So these are prepared to enhance the resistance form of a prosthesis. Okay, and uh, vertical stops. So these are known as vertical stops or support can be provided by Counter sinks or singulum rest, yes, singulum rest in the anterior abutments and occlusal rest in the posterior abutment. Okay, so basically this. Okay, so now you can see these are like the vertical stops. These are the facial segments. Yes, reduction, proximal reductions. Yes, lingual segment, proximal reduction. Okay, so you can appreciate how it's been done. 
Okay, coming to uh, yeah, this uh, two rest, basically double rest. So Bach was the one who came up with this idea. So basically, these are variations which were suggested. It has an axial coverage on both the proximal walls. Okay, and rest seats are located near the central grooves at the mesi occlusion and distal occlusal side. Uh, they actually resist displacement, displacement of occlusal forces. That's why it's designed and known as a double rest technique. Okay. Uh, someone else came with like a spoon shaped uh, occlusal rest to help in the retention. Okay. Also, proximal reduction should be done to move the contacts a little cervically. Okay. So we get a little bit more retention and surface. Okay, so coming to the impressions and provisionals. Uh, impression making is basically similar to our FPD. Uh, elastomeric impression is taken, is indicated. So a single impression technique can be done, double mix with a putty and light body, uh, as we do in our normal tool preparation. So same thing can be used. Uh, coming to the bonding. So what happens is the surface is cleaned with pumice and water. 30% phosphoric acid is used to edge the prepared enamel for 15 seconds, okay, 15 seconds. Then it is rinsed and dried. Then some, there are a few specially formulated res, composite resin cements which are available for bonding of uh, uh, resin bonded fixed process, which were also discussed, it can be used, right? So we discussed in the chemical um, uh, type of bridges. Okay, so the bonding agent or primer is also used on the prepared enamel surface as recommended by the manufacturer. Resin cement is mixed and placed on the internal surface of the retainer. Okay. Coming to the maintenance and recall. So such bridges definitely needs to be reviewed and maintained periodically. Okay, so a periodic recall is necessary. Any signs of debonding, if detected early, can be rectified. Okay, because it will help us to avoid more damage to the tooth. Periodontal health should also be reviewed and maintained as the retainer may accumulate plaque and or contouring of lingual surface. So yes, periodontal issues is also a very big thing here. So that needs to be taken care of, guys. Okay, coming to the last segment of the presentation. So these are the causes of failure of resin bonded FPDs. In first, or oh, amongst the three are inappropriate patient selection. So malalignment of teeth resulting in the poor path of insertion. Yes. So we have seen that few times in our department and uh, that's why we cannot go for resin-based restorations, resin-bonded restorations. Okay. Short abutments, thin abutments, inadequate enamel for bonding, history of metal sensitivity, heavy occlusal forces. So in such places, you really cannot go for a resin bonded okay second problem comes in the incomplete tooth preparations so inadequate proximal lingual reduction less than 180 degree extension of the retainer lack of clearance of protrusion so guys what does this basically do it decreases the retention of the processes oh that's all you understand and that will cause the failure of the processes okay so that all is because of the incomplete preparation. Okay, coming to the last failure, that is the bonding failure. Contamination during the bonding, prolonged mixing, inappropriate loading agents. So obviously you understand all that and uh, this many times uh, results in failure of uh, the processes and uh, the longevity is decreased and that's why we have to either redo it and reconsider Okay, so coming to uh, concluding our topic today, coming to the summary. So resin bonded processes are viable processes in certain situations. Understand wherever they are indicated, they should receive the same attention to detail as a conventional FPD, which has a very long term success rate. Okay, so patient selection is vital, very important. And tooth preparation or enamel activation is mandatory. Otherwise, it's not going to bond. 
and if we do not do a proper preparation you you have seen that um, that leads to a failure in our restoration so although there are newer metal free ceramic resin bonded bridges which are there which show promising results we have to wait for long term results to replace a conventional metal resin bonded restorations okay so guys this is an option however you need to consider it very carefully before considering it as a treatment option because of its many drawbacks and because it's indicated in very specific places so you need to take a proper decision so hope you understood the lecture if you have any questions guys please uh, refer to our fpd textbooks which are schillenberg and rosensteel uh, so these are two separate uh, fixed partial denture textbooks other than that uh, come and see me i am always there on uh, floor number 20 in the prosthetic lab uh, so i can clarify your doubts thank you for patient listening